Wasabi, you guys. Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. In this section, we'll be doing some very advanced manipulation with Queen's Rule. And not only with advanced man manipulations like uh, our previous videos, but in this section, we're going to be dealing with like very advanced tricks. Like, I mean, like some, some new uh, trig identities and other stuff. All right, let's get into it. Let's first start with this one because this one is a common integral. So this one we have zero from zero to pi over four. How are we going to use Queen's rule with this integral? Hmm. So let's see. Tangent. What is what? What is tangent? What happens if we use King's rule for ta uh, pi over four? minus x. So if you remember your trig identity, right, this is tangent pi over 4, which is 1, minus tangent of x, and then tangent, I'm sorry, 1 plus tangent of pi over 4, which is 1, times uh, tangent of x. So what we have technically is we pretty much have this. Okay, so this is what tangent of pi over 4 minus x looks like. Alright, interesting. But we have 1 plus tangent of x. So for 1 plus tangent of pi over 4 minus x, we have 1 plus this. 1 minus tangent of x, and this is going to equal to 1 plus tangent of x, 1 minus, I'm sorry, 1 plus uh, tangent of x plus 1 minus, I'm just going to simplify, this, is, this will give us 2 over 1 plus tangent of x, because the tangent x and the minus tangent x is going to cancel it out. So, when we apply u equal pi over 4 minus x, we're going to get so pi over 4, the ln of 2 minus the ln of 1 plus tangent of x by log rules. Now, would you look at that? If this is equal to i, and this portion is equal to i, we technically have i equals 0 to pi over 4, ln of 2 minus i, right? Let's literally what we have. So then 2y, integrate this, this is just pi over 4, ln of 2. So our, in, our integral is equal to pi over 8, ln of 2. Very tricky. This is very hard to see. It is very hard to see. So I have, I had to show you this. I had to show you this, uh, oops this identity so that you are aware that you can do cool manipulations like this okay whoa now this looks crazy all right don't freak out don't freak out i i noticed something here right zero pi over six and we have pi over six minus x so that's tells me huh what if we use king's rule or queen's rule so let's go ahead. If we apply King's rule, we get pi over 6 minus x. And then, of course, the denominator is still the same thing. And then, if we add it together, right? If we add it together, I'm just going to have an, a half for now, just to shorten the process. When we add it together, when we add these two integrals together, uh, the x cancels out. x minus x plus pi over 6. Okay. So this is what we have. Alright. But, so now what? What do we, what do we do? What do we do now? Right. What, what do we do now? We have pi over 12 
but then how, how do we simplify this further? Well, let's see. We have, well, I'll, I'll put it as cosine of x for now. I won't turn it into secant because, well, I don't know. I'm just kind of seeing where this goes, right? Cosine of pi over 6 minus x, let's see. We know our trig identities, right? This would be cosine pi over 6. What is cosine pi over 6? You can draw the circle, uh, you can draw the unit circle if you need to. Pi over 6, that's like root 3 over 2. And then cosine of x plus and sine of pi over 6 and sine of x. Okay. But then, how, how, I mean, how is this going to help? Um, this, let's see, pi over 6, pi over 6 here, and then we have secant x, root 3 of cosine of x, plus sine of x. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Multiply secant x top and bottom again. Then we get 0 of pi over 6. Secant square of x. And now we just have root 3 plus tangent of x dx. Aha, uh -huh, now this is just simple. This is very easy to do, right? 0 root 3 plus u, and then du, let's see, tangent of pi over 6, what is that? That's like 1 over root 3, right? And we can easily see that this is just simply ln of u plus root 3, right? Plug in 0, plug in whatever this is. Okay, and now we have our answer. So what we have now is we have 1 over root 3 plus root 3 over root 3 technically. This is technically what we have. We can simplify this by multiplying ln of, I'm sorry, multiplying square root of 3 to top and bottom. We get 1 plus, three. this is very ironic, wow. We get 4 thirds. So I guess our answer is the ln, pi over 6, ln of 4 thirds. I believe this is our answer. Okay. A little tricky, a little tricky. I think this part right here, I think this part, this part right here is what scares a lot of people. And they would like hesitate. No, just, just keep going. Go with the flow. If you need to, turn this to secant x to kind of change your perspective a little bit. Uh, take this constant out to make it more uh, nicer, right? It makes it, helps makes it look nicer so that it doesn't distract you. So, uh, yeah, it's a little tricky, but just get comfortable and um, go with the flow. Let's go ahead and do this one. We have zero from zero to pi over two. All right, Queen's rule. Let's just dive into Queen's rule. Let's see what happens. See, if I do that, I'll end up with pi over 2 minus x, um, which pi over 2 minus pi over 4 still gives me pi over 4. So I'll end up with pi over 4 minus x, but I mean, it's, in, it's inside of an absolute value, so I'll, I'll still get the same thing. So I'll just leave it like that. And then of course we have cosine square converted. So now you can easily see that adding two of these integrals just gives us e to the absolute value of x minus pi over 4. Right. Because sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1. So this is all we're left. 
Okay. Now we just have to deal with this absolute value. How do we deal with absolute values? If you remember your beginner training, let's see. Pi over 4. Consider pi over 4. Uh, let's see. Anything less than pi over 4 will be negative. And then anything above pi over 4, oh, I'm sorry, that should be pi over 4. Anything above pi over 4, and up to pi over 2, we can leave it as is. Just like that. And now we integrate accordingly. And this is a half. Uh, I'm going to put e to pi 4 like that. Now we have negative e to the negative x from 0 to pi over 4 plus a half of e to the negative pi over 4 is just regularly e to the x but we have pi over 4 to pi over 2. Okay. So now let's see, plug in pi over 4 here. Uh, we have a half e pi over four. oh I'm sorry let me rewrite that that's gonna annoy the crap out of me pi over four plug in let's see if I plug in zero first I get one minus and then plug in here rewrite it like that and on this side we have let's see plug in this e to the pi over two minus e to the pi over four all right. Let's simplify this. Can we simplify this? We could legally leave it like this. Uh, but uh, just for the sake of this video, I'll just simplify it. If I distribute it, I get 1 half plus, let's see, this times that, a half of e to the pi over 4. And then minus a half. Yeah, I think it just gives me half. And so what we have is we have e to the power of pi over 4 minus 1. I believe this is our answer. Huh, this looks familiar. Pi over 4 is the answer pi over 4. Wait a minute. Look at the balance. This is from pi over 6 to pi over 3. Huh. Can we still use Queen's Rule with this? Yes, you can actually. And let me show you why. So, we're going to use Queen's Rule, right? Pi over 2 minus x. But how is this... How, how is still how is this going to help us? Since we have pi over 6 and pi over 3. Well, King's rule says that you can use this, and here's why. It's because pi over 3 plus pi over 6 equals to pi over 2. And that is why we can do this, because of King's rule, right? If you remember King's rule, a plus b minus x, that's literally what this is. Okay? So... We can freely go ahead and do Queen's Rule, and the bounds will remain the same. And so now we have cosine 5x, you know, and, and the rest it just stays the same, of course. We know that. And then when we combine it, right, we get pi over 6, pi over 3. The whole fraction cancels out as we add them together. And now we just have a half of pi over 3 minus pi over 6. And this is equal to, let's see, well, this is 2 pi minus pi, right? This is equal to pi over 12. So it does not equal to pi over 4. It's the same concept. It's just different bounds. That's all it is. Same process, but different bounds. And so because of these different bounds, instead of pi over 4, we get pi over 12.
Okay. Oh god, this looks like a very ugly integral. Now, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Just remain calm and just kind of go with the flow. Okay. So, I made this integral, and this is our last integral for this video. And it is very tricky to see. And this just comes with a lot of experimentations. So, okay, cosines and sines, but we have 0 to pi over 4. So, what now? What do we, what do, we do? Well, let's play around for a little bit. What if we do u equals pi over 4 minus x? Well, let me show you that pi over 4 minus x for cosine. This will equal square root of 2 of cosine of x plus sine of x. Right? That pi over 4 is the 1 over root 2. Okay. Cosine of pi over 4 is equal to sine of pi over 4. They both equal to 1 over root 2, which is why I factored it. Okay. Okay, so we know that, but what about sine? Because we have sine here. For sine, we have 1 over root 2. This would be cosine of x minus sine of x. Right? Sine pi over 4 times cosine of x minus cosine pi over 4 times sine of x. This is what we get. Okay. All right. So then what that means is that when we do u equal pi over 4 minus x, let's see, for cosine of x, we, get, we can abbreviate this. So root 2 times cosine of this, or uh, this, this whole thing. Let's abbreviate it. We get cosine plus sine of x plus 1. And then here, we technically, we're technically dealing with this plus this. This plus this, the sines actually cancels out. So what we actually have is root 2 cosine. Ooh, look at this. We have 1 over root 2. And then we have 1 plus tangent of x plus secant of x dx. Oh, wow. Well, that was easy. This is a lot easier than we thought, right? This is just x plus ln of secant x plus ln of secant of x plus tangent of x. And we just plug in uh, from 0 to pi over 4 here. Let's see, if you plug in 0, you, everything just becomes 0, so we can just focus on pi over 4. So what we have is 1 over root 2. This is pi over 4 plus the ln of, let's see, secant of pi over 4, that's root 2, plus ln of root 2 plus 1. So what we technically have is pi over 4 root 2 plus 1 over root 2 the ln of 2 plus root 2. This is our answer. There you go. Not as bad as we thought, right? This, this came out very clean, very nice. So thank goodness for Queen's Rule, okay? All right, and that is it. That is our last integral. A lot of tricky manipulations, and uh, you just have to get very comfortable with these uh, trig identities as well because these are not very standard uh, to do. But uh, you don't have to memorize it. You can just kind of like, okay, let's just kind of like do what I just did, like just kind of experiment. Okay? All right. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, practice to gain some uh, comfort and experience with these types of integrals. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next part.